We are here to show you how to take your co-pilot tandem and pack it into your SNS uh, co-pilot cases. We're going to start by removing the pedals. Uh, this is different pedals require a different uh, type of, of tool to remove them. We have on the front here a set of SPD pedals that uses an 8 millimeter Allen wrench. And on the rear, we have a typical pair of, of cage type pedals that use a 15 millimeter um, open end wrench. They turn counterclockwise for removal, clockwise to install. The left hand pedals um, have a left hand thread. As you're disassembling your bike, be sure and keep track of all your components. You don't want to leave anything behind. So I would recommend putting everything together neatly. It uh, doesn't matter where, but always put everything in the same place so that when you have your frame uh, back in your case, you can find all of your components, bundle them all up, and find a spot for them in the case. After the pedals are out, uh, it's time to begin loosening the couplers. And here I have my universal SNS spanner. We're only going to be using the two larger uh, parts of the spanner on the tandem frame. The largest one fits on the down tube coupler and the boom tube coupler. And this one fits on everything else. You want to firmly engage the hook into the slot on the coupler and turn the coupler counterclockwise. So I'm going to go around the frame and loosen each of these couplers. Here we're going to the larger side to fit on the boom tube coupler. Uh, you don't have to worry about the cable at this point. Just go over them. We can start loosening the cable splitters. Cable splitters are a lot like the coupler, but they can be loosened uh, by hand. Don't use a wrench on these. Just tighten them with your fingers, loosen them with your fingers. Okay, we've done the brake cable splitter. Now we need to do the derailleur cable splitter. They're down here, and there are two of them. You simply turn counterclockwise, and you'll have them separated. You can see if you take a close look at these things that uh, the front piece on the cable splitter has a couple little set screws and those are biting into this cable so that makes that connection solid. And on the rear it's a whole separate cable. So one of the bonuses of using these things is you don't need special tandem linked cables. When you remove the rear wheel, make sure that your chain has shifted into the small cog. That will make dropping the wheel out easier. Uh, open the skewer. Give the skewer a few turns to get plenty of slack. Pull the derailleur back and just drop the wheel down. A lot of people carry uh, baby wipes in their uh, cases so that you can easily clean your hands. After you've removed the wheel, you'll want to take the skewer out. The skewer must be removed from each wheel to make sure that the wheel has adequate room in the case. After the brake, you'll have a travel agent, and this is a linear pull brake to have a single digit seven. It's on a lot of the pins that we make. You want to physically grab the brake caliper and pull the travel agent out and this will open the caliper right up. Open the skewer, give a few turns, drop the wheel out. Many of our new commotion bikes come with disc brakes and the disc brakes need to be dealt with a little bit differently for travel than the rim brakes do. So we'll go ahead and take this wheel off, just like removing any other wheel the disc will easily slip out from between the disc brake caliper. The disc rotor, or disc itself, is attached with uh, six bolts. Um, you'll find that the attachment is what's called a torque spinning, T-O-R-X, and I've got a few different tool 
tables here that uh, show the different varieties that you can find uh, uh, torques fitting in. This is a uh, screwdriver style. Some of them are L-shaped. Uh, here's a T-shaped one. You can even get them to fit onto a ratchet. So we're going to go ahead and remove this rotor, which is just a matter of taking out all of the bolts. And the reason we want to remove the rotor is so that there is little or no chance that the rotor can become damaged. Okay, we're taking the last bolt off. The rotor will then lift right off of the wheel. And we recommend uh, if you have front and rear discs, put them together, wrap them with newspaper, and tuck them into your case. It's a simple. Okay, now we're going to start on cutting the padding that's going to protect your frame while it's in transit. This is SNS Machines uh, padding, and it's a it's a foam with a Cordura nylon on the outside, a Velcro strip on one side, and material that can be Velcroed to any point on the hook and loop strip. We have a new type of padding that's similar to this, but instead of foam, it has neoprene and the material is elastic, um, so it's a little bit more form-fitting to the bike and less compressible. But as far as getting this stuff ready to fit onto your bike, cutting it and labeling it, for all practical purposes, it's going to be the same. So here we have our padding and we're going to measure it up to the bike by um, holding it up to a section of frame. Here I'm going to cut the section that's going to go from the front seat tube to just past the coupler on the rear top tube. And I'm first going to just cut it where I was holding my thumb. And this is a simple one because there's, there's no component to interfere with this length of pad. I'm going to open this up just a little bit by the coupler because on this piece we're also going to want it to go a little bit past the coupling. So when the frame sections are apart, there are no uh, bare metal pieces exposed. So here again, I'm just holding my thumb up uh, here to where I want my tube to end my uh, padding to end, and I'm going to cut to that point. So this section too is going to go past the coupler. And we're going to leave these a little loose for now because when we're done with the padding, we're going to uh, separate the frame, and we need access to the couplers to be able to do that. So, the more complicated parts are um, the sections of the frame that are interrupted by components. For instance, on the rear seat tube, we have to get around the front derailleur. So I'm going to show you how we cut those pieces. Again, we want to hold the padding section up to the full length that you want to cut. And I'm just using my thumb to mark where I want to end the padding. And then I'm going to take the same piece and hold it up to the tube again. And I'm going to grab the padding where it goes around the, uh, where the front derailleur is clamped to the frame. And I'm going to cut an opening here. And I'm just going to basically cut a U shape and it doesn't have to exactly match um, the dimensions of the part. We're just trying to allow the pad to wrap around the frame um, easily around where the components uh, meet up to the frame. So I've got a cutout there for the front derailleur. And now I need a little cutout to get around where these tubes intersect as well. So I'm going to cut another slot so that 
This can wrap around the very top of the seat tube where the seat stays and the top tube intersect. And because we've got more space being taken up by those, I need a bigger cutout to wrap around there. So another U shape. And here we go. This is now going to wrap around easily. Here again, I'm going to hold the pad up to the frame. I'm going to slip this back behind the chain ring. And with my thumb, I'm going to mark it right to the dropout. And of course, with the rear end, you know that you have identical length tubes on each side of the bike. So I'm going to cut an identical length piece of padding for the other side. And then we're going to uh, pull the pad up to the frame. Now here, I don't think you can see this with the camera angle, but I'm going to put my thumb right next to where the um, chainstay bridge is. The chainstay bridge is the little tube that connects the left side to the right side and it's right up near the crank set here. So I'm going to cut one of those U sections here and that's going to allow the pad to wrap around the uh, chainstay bridge. Here we're going to do seat stays, same technique, I'm going to cut the pad with a little bit of extra length so we're protecting the uh, drop out a little bit. We have the extra complication here on this bike um, of the uh, cantilever or linear full brake studs plus the seat stay bridge. So we need to cut a little U slot for each one of those. And I'm just going to put my thumb right next to that. And so I'm cutting a, an opening for the brake mount there. And then I'll put my pad up here again. And cut another one for the seat stay bridge. basically a mirror image of that for the other side. And in a moment I'll show you how to mark the padding so that you remember which piece goes where. Very important. Valve action paint marker. You can see here, valve action paint marker by mark out. There are several brands of these that are available at hobby stores. When you mark the pads, uh, think of uh, terminology that makes sense to you. I've marked this one FPT for front top tube. This one is marked FLT for front lateral tube. Just remember uh, what you're calling it so that when you're looking for the pad that fits the part of the bike, the, um, it makes sense to you. I'm going to show you a couple of more of the unusually shaped pieces um, for where the lateral comes into the boom tube. You need a thick piece of padding. I take two pieces of the wide padding long enough to go past the coupler and Velcro them together. And then these are going to wrap around this whole section. We don't need to close it up right now because we're going to be taking this apart in a minute. Same with the uh, little stubs of uh, tubing that come behind the front section. You just need a little short piece of padding. Again, make sure the padding will go past the coupler when the frame is apart. Probably don't need to label these. They're all the same. For the rear, uh, we're going to take 
a couple little pieces like this, velcro them together, and this is going to strap the rear derailleur cage forward like this. And you can gather up the excess chain and gather all that together and you've uh, prevented messes from happening here. So you know how I made that over the head tube. See, I've marked the HT for head tube and just cut little slits so that we have a little band that will go around the top and the bottom and this gets tucked in around these edges here. Now we need to remove the saddles. Actually, the whole seat post will come out of the frame. So, got my four millimeter Allen wrench. Just pull that right out of the frame. After you've pulled it out, just slightly tighten your um, seat post binder. This will keep the seat post binder from falling off in transit and will keep the bolt from rattling out of the seat post binder. And we'll be removing the stoker stem from the front seat post. On the front handlebar, there are four bolts. And you want to, once all, all four bolts are loose, you can then remove the base plate of the handlebar stem. Now the handlebar itself is relatively free. You, you are going to be connected by one cable. Just gently set that down. Uh, the face plate, the stem, you want to put back into place. The stoker stem needs to be removed from the front seat post. This takes a five millimeter Allen wrench. To pack the tandem into the case, we need to remove the front crank set. For this crank set, it means we need an 8mm Allen wrench, and it's going to go into this one key release mechanism. We're going to turn this counterclockwise, and you'll notice this bolt will turn freely for a little ways, and then you'll suddenly encounter some resistance. Keep turning it. The resistance is the flange of the bolt that you're turning, engaging this outer cap here. And it's using the threads to push against that outer cap. And that is what is going to remove the crank arm from the spindle. So you keep turning against that resistance. You'll notice it gets easier after a little bit until the whole thing is off. We have the right arm off now. Here's a place where you don't want to lose little parts. We have a wave washer and a outside seal spacer. After the right crank arm is removed, the spindle will slide out of the frame. And you take the left crank arm out with the spindle attached. Now, we can either put these pieces back onto this crank arm uh, and simply reattach this bolt, or we can put these small parts that we definitely don't want to lose into a, a nice sealed bag. Either way, make sure all of your parts stay together. We're going to show you a couple of different ways to remove your chain. Uh, first, I'll show you the quick and easy way. And this only works with a regular link type chain. It does not work with our belt. I'll show you how. If your chain is very tight, don't try this method. Uh, the simple and quick way to remove your chain is to act like a derailleur, which is to move the chain laterally while you're pedaling. So you can pull it for you, and if you can 
zoom in on this, you can see that the links are already coming off here. Yeah? Now the chain will come off freely. Try to keep things from getting tangled up here and just roll your chain up neatly and put it in a plastic bag. Now we're going to show you how to loosen the eccentric on your tandem. This is the Commotion self-locking eccentric. On either side it has two bolts. Um, they take a four millimeter Allen wrench. Turn the bolt counterclockwise. A little tight getting in here on the chain ring side. The other side is a little easier. I'm going to do that real quickly. And if you're lucky enough to have one of these Allen wrenches with the ball in, you can come in at an angle to loosen these. You don't have to loosen them much in order to get some slack on the eccentric unit. See now I can turn this eccentric and if you look at what the chain is doing you can see it loosening and tightening. Uh, with lots of slack it's very easy to get the chain off. A little pedaling and a little lateral movement and the chain is free. And don't forget to snug your eccentric screws up after you've uh, loosened them. You don't want to lose one of these little bolts. If you're traveling with one of our co-pilot tandems that has the Gates carbon drive belt system on it, it's very important that you never use the technique that I showed you with the chain where you act like a derailleur and push the the belt off as you pedal. Uh, once you've loosened the eccentric, begin sliding the belt laterally off of the drive rings. And you want to do this as evenly as you can. It's okay to remove just one end. We're going to remove the front end here. And once you have the tension off, the belt is free. Handle the belt carefully. Don't fold it or kink it. Just roll it up nicely like this. Uh, place it in a bag and find room for it in your case. Now we're ready to separate the frame into its three sections. The couplers have been loosened earlier in the process, and so now you can turn them by hand and separate each section. If you encounter any resistance, uh, it's going to be because things have gotten um, tilted a little bit. For instance, if I loosen these two couplers, this section will begin to separate and there will be tension on this section. So if you encounter resistance, line everything up and you'll find that the couplers will turn freely. And I'll have the front section removed. I'm going to make sure that my pads are covering the ends of the couplers and secure the Velcro. And here are my three short sections of padding and these are going to go over these little tube stubs now. These you'll want to tighten securely so they don't fall off. Pull this back here and take these two sections apart. sections. Set this down. 
Here is the pad sandwich we made for this section. You'll notice that your derailleur cables go through a guide on the front bottom bracket. The guide has been slit with a razor, so you can pop these right out. And when you're reassembling your bike, you simply pop them right back in. For now, they should be free. And the center section is free. All three sections of the bike are free. So we're ready to start putting things into the cases. We'll start by taking the middle frame section. And we'll put it in this case. And it just drops neatly down in there. And then we're going to take the front wheel and just place it right on top of that. And we're going to take the front section of the bike. And remember, we still have a little piece of cable attached to the front brake. We're going to go ahead and leave that connected. Place the middle frame section into the case. For now, we're going to leave the handlebar attached, but just outside the case like this. Make sure all the cables are uh, going to go into the case without becoming entangled with anything. Now we're going to take the rear wheel, we're going to put it in with the middle section and the front wheel. We're going to use this heavy piece of paper to keep the wheels from banging against each other. We're going to now take the rear section of the frame, and this will drop right down onto the front section. Remember, your lid has some depth too, so this lid is going to be able to close over this easily. But we have more things to put in the case. We have the handlebars, and these are still connected by the cable, so be very careful. And the handlebar can just be worked into the voids. Don't abandon your cables. Just make sure they don't get kinked and drop them into the case. And all of the parts that we gathered up earlier, and uh, the crank set, I wrapped with heavy paper, some pedals, and the smaller stuff I put into small bags, all wrapped up inside this plastic bag. There's a nice spot for this right here. Um, keep in mind when you close the case, the handle's here. So if you have any loose, heavy stuff, it should go toward the bottom when the case is upright. Got a few things left here. Our silver handlebar. Uh, saddles, you'll see I cut and labeled some of the extra padding. Uh, SP for seat toast. And these we can put in either case. Just find some room and tuck them in. And now we're ready to close. Of course, before you close your cases up, I recommend taking a good look and making sure that uh, everything can be secured into place without to force anything. Now, it's a good idea if you have uh, some newspaper, towels, pieces of foam, great to use that to uh, fill the voids in the case because any damage that might occur to your bicycle in transit is more likely to occur from your own items shifting around inside the case than it is from luggage being mishandled. Um, so fill those voids. Um, a lot of people now use something to tie everything together. So if the TSA uh, takes your bicycle out of the case, we want them to have an easy time getting everything back together. Uh, so you can use something like uh, zip ties, um, twine, 
bits of poly uh, twine to tie everything together so that if it's lifted out, it's more or less one piece and can go back in. We also have an item called an SNS cargo net that will tie everything together. There's any number of ways to do it. It's a good idea and could save you some time and headaches. Another good suggestion is to um, place a label or a piece of paper inside each case with your name and cell phone number so that if a TSA agent pulls your bike out and cannot get it back together, they can call your cell phone and find you somewhere uh, in the airport, hopefully, um, so that you can help them get it back into a case so it can travel safely. We'll go ahead and close these up just the way they are. Just a matter of zipping it up. The straps on the hybrid case are here to ensure that if the zipper were to fail, you have some redundancy here. Uh, take the loose ends of the strap and just tuck it under. Um, if you want to, probably not vital. If you have uh, extra slack in these, the straps can be adjusted. Forget your SNS spanner. All of the tools that you use to disassemble your bike will be needed when you assemble it. So make sure you get those in with your components. Send us a picture. Thanks.